Hey, everybody, if you love combat sports such as MMA, Kyokushin, boxing, BJJ, etc., make sure to hit the like, share, subscribe, and comment button on the Drew Spirience channel, the show that's 80% combat sports and 20% everything else. Thank you to the supporters of Marshall Way Blog, One Kyokushin, KRT Tips and Tricks, and Real Talk that the Marshall Way hosts with Shian Terry Burkett. These three pages... I work together with them in order to grow Kyokushin Karate. So no matter the association or level you are in Kyokushin, if you have content to share to grow Kyokushin Karate, make sure to like and message us and we'll do what we can to help your page or pages grow. Also, thank you to the supporter Moments Management. If you're an up-and-coming fighter, especially in my Kyokushin crowd, if you're looking to go prof professional, finding a good manager is very hard. Luckily, there's Moments Management where Nima Safapur and his team will make sure you understand what you're getting into with pro fighting and that you are educated for before, during, and after, so you leave healthy and wealthy. Moments management, where quality and care come first. And also, if you're in Quebec, you want to take up martial arts, and you want to get into Kyokushin, I always recommend Kyokushin Boucherville with uh, Shian Pierre Catafor and his amazing team of other senseis and Shian, such as Sensei Joan Fournier, amongst others, in Ikeo Nakamura. If you're looking to learn new habits, discover tradition with martial arts, make sure to check them out. Ikeo Nakamura. If you're looking to take your health into your hands and develop good habits and uh, discover a vast new community and make new friendships, they are the ones to look forward to. And with that, we'll get to our guest. <laughs> Hey, everyone, this is the Drew Spirience, the show that's 80% combat sports and 20% everything else. Today's guests are huge names for the show. These are some of the biggest names that have been willing to come on. One is a devoted father. He is a devoted fireman, a coach of uh, Team Musasi, and a, a very good martial artist. He is the one, the only Joey Birkenbosch, and the one next to him is a Dutch combat sports legend. He is the head coach of uh, Team Musasi, runs his own gym, has done plenty of seminars. Uh, the list goes on and on. He's the one, the only coach, Bert Cops. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Drew. Nice to have me. Yeah, <laughs> we're in front of the gym. I hope you can see it. Yeah, Cops. Cops, cops having Yeah. That's, oh, cops, you see it? Oh, right yeah. Oh, yeah. About this year. There we go. Hey, Perth. So, guys, uh, how's everything been uh, with uh, things reopening and... Uh, the last last week's win we'll get to that but how has the business been for cops uh for the cops gym yeah it's uh, actually uh not bad and uh yeah the gym is open again two two months ago and uh yeah we're happy and um yeah the classes are busy and uh the gym is uh running good very good awesome that's great to hear so i'm gonna ask you guys because this is a two-part <laughs> question for both of you well same yeah. question. So, Bird's gonna be right back. There's some bro, no problem. Yeah. Work, so, Joey, yeah. tell me, how did you discover martial arts? Um, actually, I did because of Gegard. Really? Because um, after his fight with King Mo in Strike Force, mm -hmm. he, he came to our gym to uh, to wrestle with us. Mm -hmm. And um, I started wrestling, and 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 he he just walked in. I wrestled with him, and I went over to the bar, and I I got me a drink, and I was like, Hey, who's this guy? <laughs> I didn't know him. I said, Bert, who's this guy? And he was like, yeah, that's that's Gegard Pusasi. He's the strike force champ. I said, like, he's a world champion. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so the, uh, from that point on, we kind of yeah, became friends. And, and I started wrestling with him every week. And um, eventually, he told me to put on some some MMA gloves. And I started beating up people here. So that's how I, how I started. That's awesome. By the way, he won that fight versus King Mo. Even though in the U.S. judges they gave it to Mo, look at the damage for those who want to rewatch. He won. Yeah. Gegard won that fight. Well, as I said, through that, through that, and yeah. and well, since that he just started wrestling with us, mm -hmm. best wrestling gym in Holland, and um, yeah, man, it it went up from there. Awesome. So you just so it's happened by chance, and you're also um, a firefighter too by trade. And how did how did that how did you decide to do that? Were you someone that's always more hands on and likes being on the move always? I am for sure. But my my father and both my uncles were uh, firemen, so I'm mm. a second generation. Awesome. That's a real. That's a real. It's real tough. It's a really rewarding, but it's 
it must be, has there ever been like experiences where that make you go, what did I just experience doing this? Yeah, a bunch of times, man. Mm-hmm. Bunch of times, yeah. We have some crazy fires here in Amsterdam. We had uh, a lot of uh, a lot of yeah, difficult. Uh, how do you call it? CPR, you know, mm-hmm. uh, heart attacks and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, Childs also drowning. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's awesome. a tough job, man. But I'm uh, very honored to do it and help the community. It, it's 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 servitude. You're 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 ser- you're ser- you're serving in it, and that's what's the biggest reward because you're making a difference in saving people's lives and imagine all the kids, especially that you've helped and then they see you and your team and then they want to embark on, they, it gives them a path to embark on that can make them better people. Yeah, I hope so. And then uh, especially in coaching, I, I used to be, uh, I used to play baseball for 25 years mm-hmm. and um, I also coached in that, but uh, I really found my passion in wrestling because I always wrestled when I was mm-hmm. younger. Uh, I, I did uh, uh, in the summer when the, when the or in, in the spring when when the when the the start the, the grass started growing and then the birds started in there, started singing. That's when I went to the baseball field and then in the end of the season I, I went straight to the wrestling room. I did my wrestling season, and uh, mm-hmm. I did that for I don't know how many years. So um, yeah, I really found my passion in, in wrestling and in um, in, in MMA. Oh, really? I never threw a ball at baseball anymore. Yeah, <laughs> happened to well, me we with hockey. Yeah, I can't I can't play hockey anymore. I mean, I'm good at fighting. So for me, it's like just I don't want to make the show about me. It's more about the guests. But just to say I relate yeah, but to I that. Mean, you can re- 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 recall on how it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You have a passion and you think this is all that. But I, I should have quit baseball 10 years earlier and, and just you know, just default on this. And yeah, I don't know where I could have been. Yeah, I understand completely. But you chose wrestling, and that's what interests me because Holland is known as a kickboxing nation, Kyokushin karate, taekwondo. Yeah. So yeah. what made you choose wrestling, say, over a striking martial arts? Well, again, my father. Mm-hmm. My father was one of the best uh, wrestlers in Holland. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know what this is. Oh, my phone is just starting to... Hold on. Okay. <laughs> it's not working on itself. Um, uh, my father was um, actually a, a student of Bert's father and uh, eventually ended up um, uh, battling or, or competing against Bert Jr. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, we've always been uh, uh, yeah, uh, friends and friends of the family. And that's how I enrolled. I started when I was six years old. That's that's awesome. That's, a, that's amazing to see. And um, now we take it to, I want to take it to... Um, the current gym because you know you met Bert because it's a family connection and then you were there before right before Gegard came so you've been there since uh, the early days what was Dutch MMA like in those days was it still a kickboxing nation or is MMA growing at a fast pace too it's uh I have to say the last three to four years it's grown a little more mm-hmm. yeah before this it was uh, uh Dutch people were pretty arrogant about um, the kickboxing Mm-hmm. We were good at it, and you know, we don't want to have touching people, and you don't want to be on the ground, and you don't want to fall. And 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 now, since Gegard and since Alistair, and and you know, uh, Shemana and Stephen Struve, and things are really starting to develop in the MMA world, and we're starting to get uh, more more MMA gyms. Mm-hmm. So uh, things are going good. Awesome. I was, was never at a really high level in Holland. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, I think. Uh, mm-hmm. And I think also yeah, Gegard is a black belt in judo, isn't he? Yeah, when he, no, not a black belt, but he did judo when he was younger. Like, okay. Like, um, before he, he was 15. Okay. And this I is something this is something that, that I have to ask because I've asked Ricardo, but I want to get your opinion on it. So I do Kyokushin karate. The stance Gegard uh-huh. has is a Kyokushin stance. Has Gegard, yes. can we confirm, did Gegard ever do some form of Kyokushin to help him with his striking stance or is it always Dutch kickboxing? No, he, he did train with uh, Appi Echtel. It, mm-hmm. it's, it's a guy from, from Holland and he is originally from uh, Kyokushin. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if he, if he really got his stance from this. It's just mm-hmm. uh, something he developed over the years and he, yeah, it turned out to be successful. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you see him kickbox with kickboxes, he adapts to it and he just beats the shit out of him and uh and, and wrestling you know he, he just turns it over and starts wrestling i think he's, he's one of the best wrestlers here in the gym now i agree i agree the way he's yeah. grounded oh, oh, hey, hey, Bert. Bert. hey Bert. there you are okay. man. 
Yeah, I know you're a businessman. You're an owner. You got to take care of everything. <laughs> Everybody has to be taken care of. So I was yeah. just asking, I was just asking Joey about his background. He was telling me how your dad and uh, his dad knew each other and then how there's the family connection. And we're talking yes. about the growth of Dutch uh, martial arts. You have some other prospects coming uh, yeah. up and I wanted to put some highlights yeah, on them. One of them is Gino Van Stennis. And there's also yeah. Costello. Costello's a contender in Bellator. But tell me about Gino. What's the, how's his development been for both of you guys? Yeah, he's getting better uh, every time. And uh, yeah, he's, uh, I hope he's just as good as his brother, uh, Costello. Mm -hmm. But he's, he's coming, he's coming. He's an upcoming mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. the podcast. And Costello, and uh, would you say Costello and Gino, are they natural? Like, I know it's, they're mixed martial artists, but are, would you say their strong points are in their grappling from what you both have seen, or is it in their striking too? What What's the biggest surprise? Yeah, they, they, mix, they mix it up very well. Yeah, mm -hmm. Ricardo has been teaching them since they were very young, so yeah. he, he, he taught them the whole the full package. Oh, sorry, I have to go again. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Bert will come back, guys. Bert's going to come yeah. in and out of the episode. He's like, he's like, he's a, he's a busy man. This is just, but Joey's the main guest here, but don't worry. So, yes, yeah, so you were saying that Ricardo's seen these two since they were kids basically yeah 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 he taught them everything and uh of course they're they're very talented so they pick up uh, a lot of stuff and um yeah they're, they're awesome they're very good guys but but you know uh, amsterdam and rotterdam is it's pretty far away from each other mm. so uh well not pretty far i mean not in american or canadian uh <laughs> far but you know, for us far is an, an hour and a half drive if yeah. you drive like 50 minutes longer you're in belgium but for exactly. us it's, it's long. Yeah. So I'm from Canada, you know, you're from Holland and it's, and uh, you know, let's take it away from martial arts here. Uh, our countries have a very good relationship, apparently. Like if, if I, I, from what I've heard, I was told if I say I'm from Canada and I come to the Netherlands, I'll be treat, I'll be treated like I'm a, an adopted son because of um, what Canadians did in the war to help uh, Holland yeah. during world war two. Is that true? It's very true. And also if you tell them, you know, us, then you'll be good. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I can say that if, if you I know uh, Joey Birkenbush and Bert Cops, then uh, you'll be good to go. Perfect. Holland. I'll make sure to mention that because I do plan to come to uh, Holland in about a year or two because of my Kyo, because I have some Kyokushin contacts. Shout out to Sensei cool. Wesley Jensen, who's a huge Musasi fan, by the way. Like I sent a picture of him with Gegard to Nima, and I said, This is why we're very proud to be a Musasi fan. Always takes time for the fans and whatnot. Yeah. So Wesley, uh, I, I wanted to give him a surprise shout out here, but he's a big fan of you guys. He knows Costello, apparently. I don't know how, but, but Wesley okay. does have some contacts in the martial arts world, but it's amazing to see how small and how tight the martial arts community is. But how, when you yeah, say you're from Canada, everyone's like, okay, we're friends. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah, you guys did a little lot for us in the war. Yes, yes there's Bert again. Yeah, yeah. There he is again. There he is. So yeah, Bert. Yeah, we're just, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Here, yeah, you, like, you're all. I, I love how you just come in and out. This is what's gonna make this episode one of the best views. Like, we're gonna have to get a view. <laughs> I'm gonna have to tell Nima. I said, Nima, I'm gonna say you're gonna have to put it on all your special channels. We have to get this episode at least 1,000 views. We're gonna send it to Gegard. Oh, you will, we're for we're sure. gonna say Gegard. You're gonna Bert's put gonna it gonna up. post it. I'm gonna post it. You'll yeah, get nice. at least a thousand views. Good, good, good. And uh, yeah, and I just want to say, uh, you know, as I said, lifelong supporter. I mean. I want to just support the gym. You know, you guys mean that means so much to talk to those who got me into martial arts. But uh, and um, I was just saying, Bert. So let me ask both of you. So let's say I come from Canada, and you know, I'm and you know, let's say I'm a guest. You know, let's say you guys host me for dinner. What is one beer that I should, or one drink or food that I should bring as a guest if I ever come to either of your houses for dinner? Heineken. Heineken? Heineken no, is a big. guest, he said. <laughs> is it, all right? Yeah, but I made his name up for some. Oh, okay. it doesn't matter. We all we like it. Doesn't, him, we, we're, <laughs> we're glad to have you, man. Don't, don't worry yeah, about bringing man. anything. You guys come to your, your presence is enough. And you come to kill, you come to Montreal. That's where I am. Your presence yeah. is enough to don't stay at a hotel. Stay in my apartment. I'll I'll just, I'll just sleep on the floor. Give like the couch, you. couch Give will be for Bert. Joey you can take my bedroom. It doesn't matter. Like I'll just, I'll, I'll get my sleeping bag. That's how I am. It's a, I don't want you guys to have to spend money in a hotel. So it's, very it's nice for you, man. Yeah. Hey, it's, that's how it is. That's how it is. And so last week, so last week, um, Gegard, uh, basically, so last week, Gegard fought uh, Austin Vanderford, one of the best fights I've ever seen. Uh, 
no business being in there with Gegard. And no. I wanted to ask, uh, what, what, how did you guys feel about the game plan and the coaching and what went into that? Yeah, the game plan was uh, the first round, jab him as much as you can, keep the distance. Distance control, yeah. Distance control. And if you want to come for the shoot, then uh, yeah. just block play. it and make him wrestle. Block it, sprawl him yeah. and uh, get him tired. And he's so strong, Gagat. He's so yeah. such good shape. So, and, uh, but what I what I came to notice is that um, Austin didn't want to be in there. <laughs> the, the, the walkout song, and then I, I just just saw him shrink there, getting smaller and smaller. Mm-hmm. And then um, the walkout song, and, and then then the, the stare down. Yeah, it's just uh, he didn't want to be in there. He, he, he looked, looked for a way out, and then he used the shoulder. That's what happened. He looked smaller, but what I noticed is was like Austin was very like, shaky. He was like, like, just, like yeah, trying to get that explosion. He didn't, he didn't want to be there. No, no. And you guys uh, executed. And then apparently, can you guys confirm what is this beef with Connor and Gegard? Like, what, what the, yeah. what the it, fuck it, it is happens, going on? It happens four years ago mm-hmm. when after the fight, uh, Gegard against Peter Belfort, mm-hmm. and then uh, in the press conference after the match, and then Gegard say something about. Uh, Fighters with a big mouth and make mm-hmm. a lot of money and yeah. fighters like Gegard, of fighters like Connor, you have big mouth to make a lot of money because of his big mouth. And after that, Conor McGregor sent uh, with, on a Twitter message. a message on Twitter. Oh, what do you want? And I have a big knife. I cut you over. And then uh, something stupid. Yeah. Yeah, something stupid that Gegard said. Oh, what do you want uh, to? Ginger headed fuck. Ginger redhead <laughs> fucker. Yeah. I kill you, you miss it. Yeah. And yeah. then uh, that's that's why. Yeah. But uh, he was very nice to me, Connor. He <laughs> wanted to be he wanted to be with me on the picture. <laughs> I walked around and said, Coach, I want a picture with you. <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. And uh so you so you know we, we've seen Gay Guard. Uh, you know, rise up, and you know, obviously, he's like basically the the big the big one, the big the big dog, as I like to say in uh, cops gym. But is there anybody else other than say him and Costello and Gino that we should be uh, keeping an eye on? Because there's always someone yeah. who's coming up. There are some guys. Yeah, Joey is a strong guy. He's a good fighter, and there's some more guys, but not the, not the level, not yet, not the level, not yet, mm-hmm. not yet. So mm-hmm. it's. Uh, it, you gotta think of this. It's um, w- w- we uh, we weren't training too much for two years. Uh, it, mm-hmm. it was all locked down, so it it was very hard. We had we had to train, uh, you know, behind closed doors and and sneaky. I, I, I trained in basements. I trained in attics, and mm-hmm. I, I did everything to uh, you know to, to just get a little bit of training in. Oh boy, so, yeah. I gained, I ballooned up to, don't worry. Like I, I went up from like 185 up to like 220, but I'm losing it. I'm losing it. Nima was like, are you, are you training? I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm there training. Goes Bert again. There goes Bert again. Bert's like Batman. He's going to come. He's going to come. It's going to, he's like the Christian Bale Batman. Like, you know, like it's like, you know, when Gary Oldman's like, where are you? And he's like, and Batman's like, just use the signal. So I need like a cop's signal. Like, you know, like the headlights. So he'll It'll come in and out. Yeah. I love it. That's what makes this show. I love it. And so tell me about your relationship with uh, Nima. Like how has Nima played a role in team in the whole team with the uh, cops, uh, Jim and whatnot? Uh, well, Nima has been um, uh, Gegard's manager for mm-hmm. sure. And um, yeah, it, he just he just got a whole stable of uh, Team Musashi guys now. Mm-hmm. So that's good. And um, a funny story, we, we went to, uh, to, to I, I wrestled in the police and fireman games in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. And uh, we actually stayed at Nima's house in Santa Monica. Mm-hmm. So that was, yeah, that was, that was great. And um, yeah, man, we had a good time. He he is such a gentleman. I, I, and that, and like, I am, I am, it's a, it's a big privilege to say how he's helped, how, how he, how helpful he is if he knows you like when he gets to know you he'll be he'll he'll always give a hand in any way he can and that's uh that's nima for you he's he'll, he, he's willing yeah. to give the shirt off his back he's such a good yeah, guy that's what he said and he yes. said he supported you so, yeah. Uh, yeah and now bert's that's supporting me now willing. and now joey's supporting me this is great like i just gained some more supporters for the show because uh yeah and uh, and i want to ask you guys gokan the guy gokan the the, the yeah. prospect he like I want to have an eating contest with them. I heard that guy can eat like no tomorrow. 
You can have an eating contest with Gegard. He can now eat you for sure. Wow. Okay, this guy. Uh, get <laughs> the contract. Get the contract <laughs> ready. But I have to choose. But can we make it a deal here? This is the contract. Gegard can choose a meal of his choice. I'll choose yeah. a meal of my choice. And then I'll just, okay. we'll see who can eat the most. Can that, can that be done? <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. We'll manage it. Yeah. Nima, you got it. Nima, we got a new fight on your hands here. It's like a side fight. We're gonna, it's gonna be me versus Gokan and Gegard in an eating contest sponsored by Joey and Bert, food of our choice. Sure. Get the contract ready. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't want to ever. I no, don't Go Gokan is a, is a wonderful fighter, and um, I saw he ended by his win. He ended the top 10 mm. heavyweight from Bellator. So that's that's pretty awesome. It's a, it's amazing to see. Now, you guys have seen been on the side of UFC, there's Bellator, there's one FC, and then there's like the other promotions. What has been, what do you guys see? Uh, what do you guys feel Bellator yeah. is doing good right now? Because it seems like they get the fighters in, but maybe how can, how can Bellator market their fighters better? Because there's some pretty good ones coming out now. Yeah. What, what, what they really should do is, um, is, is uh, organize a fight in Holland. Mm -hmm. I mean, Gegard is the champion. We have, I think you can pretty much fill up a whole card. Mm -hmm. fill up a whole card with uh with dutch fighters so uh that's what i really think they should do denise is there uh you know there's there's yeah we gotta we can fill a whole card yeah i can fight on the card yeah you'll could just come you'll just come out you know you'll just come fight you'll do it'll be like it'll be uh everyone's got their own uh own way like there'll be you the, the van stennis brothers representing yeah, holland man. yeah yeah they're pretty good fighters yeah right? we, we can have a team of against the world I love, I love to see it. I would, I wouldn't, I would support it any time of the day. I'm, it's like, I'm, it's like, I'm a part of Musashi. Hey, my, well, hold on. My, my fellow firefighter, uh, yeah. I'm alive in the podcast. Hi. Hey. <laughs> She's a fighter also. She's going to win. Okay. Nice. Yeah. yeah. She's in, uh, what did she fight in Bellator too? Or no, she's a uh, kickbox. Oh, okay. Glory, right? I think it's Gloria. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Glory is uh, really also rebranded. And you have like Alistair there now. Then you have Bader yeah. Hari. Okay, I'm gonna ask you guys something because you know you guys know everything. Is Bader Hari like? Is he out? When is he never? When is he out of trouble? Because it's like this guy's always in the news, from what I see. Yeah, he's been, he's been doing good. At the lately. moment, he's, yeah. he's pretty uh, quiet around him. He's a father also, and he's you know he's he's getting he, a little he, older. He learned a lot of the mistakes. And, yeah, uh, he's, he's a sportsman. Yeah, but he needs to get a win though. He's a nice guy. He's a, he's a friend of us. Okay. So, uh, he had okay. crazy times, but uh, yeah. he's getting older. So uh, I saw the video of him just slap a hotel clerk. <laughs> like the guy doesn't even know who yeah. is in butter. Just like <laughs> crazy, man. He's already three years ago, I think. Yeah. 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 He's older. He's an example for his kids. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah, he, he's, he's taking on a different role. I think fatherhood changes you. That's my next question. So how has being a fireman, a father, and then a coach made you the man you are today. Busy days. Busy days, yeah. Busy days. Yeah, no, it's just uh, a big responsibility for one. And uh, trying to set a good example and, you know, trying to do good in life. Like, mm -hmm. like I said, you know, be ready for your friends and family. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. well, it's amazing to see, like, how, like, his influence has helped you guys and maybe – overall in the gym for others like they see gay guard they look at this guy you know it, the guy's an immigrant success story you know came fled yeah. iran came to holland as a refugee him and his brother you know as i we watched yeah. the bellator preview where he says i'm not a rocket scientist you know we wanted to make yeah. money fast for and he got into uh, real estate and how has that influence helped other fighters in the gym like has that helped other fighters say hey if i'm doing this i have to manage my money properly forget the cars forget the women focus on training and money and then everything will come yeah. in in due time i don't know fighters are um it's it's a different breed right so mm -hmm. it's it's really easy to uh you know if you make a little money you, you go out and spend it and we have some examples here the gym that guys have made <laughs> back in the days they made uh, i don't know ten thousand uh dollars in, in, in twenty thousand in uh <laughs> in japan and they go come home in amsterdam and spend it all in one night mm -hmm. but when they lose it. Oh, I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but Bert did. Yeah. yeah, okay. But I mean, you know, so that'll happen all the time. They're but, very clever. But, um, They're very clever guys. I'll tell you a different thing. There was there was this little kid who um, came in the gym the other day, and mm -hmm. um, and, and Gaggard liked him, and he took a picture with him. He's and a he big did, fan of Gaggard. A big fan of Gaggard. And, and he was like, yeah, I would like to train, but I don't have the money. And 
He was like, hey, Bert, let the kid train for three months. I'll pay for it. He paid wow. for a half a year. A half a year, I'm sorry, for a half a year. And, and you know, th that, that's the way I got it. He's I mean, so he's, nice. he's a good so guy. sweet for yeah. everybody. He, he seems to come from a very good family upbringing, yeah. uh, Iranian. Uh, okay, so I know he's Armenian and Iranian. No, I just want to... Armenian, is he? He's, yeah. he's born in Iran, mm -hmm. yeah. but his parents are Armenian. Yeah. yeah. And then when he's, yeah. he, they were kids, he was six, seven years old. They moved then to they Holland. traveled, yeah. they moved to Holland. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's him, there's his brother. brother Gegard, and his sister. And Gevik, they, they, they feel like real Dutchmen. <laughs> they are, yeah, they, they love. No, they're they're, they're, they're grateful what the uh, Holland gave them. Let's That's say. amazing, and it's amazing what they've done. Like they've really done, like you know, like for example, say I come to Holland, I could just be like Joey. I don't want to stay at a hotel. Does Gegard have any Airbnb I could stay at? You know, okay, like is there anything I don't? I'd rather like support, you know, him in any way. So like, imagine that now. Like unless like the way his real estate is, it must be for university students probably or people. University in students, I think he has some uh, some some um, uh, some bars, some restaurants, mm -hmm. some buildings, and they mm -hmm. they rent it out. So yeah, they're doing good. Awesome. Yeah, Awesome, man. So then, so I want to ask you guys something. Aside from fighting, we always talk about fighting. When you guys aren't doing martial arts, what's a typical day like for the both of you with other interests you guys have? Uh, my interest is... Watch fights all day. Yeah, watching fights, <laughs> UFC, Bellator, MMA, but especially wrestling. That's I love, yeah, yeah, yeah. we love wrestling. Yeah. When the World Championships yeah. are there, the World yeah. Cup, Europe, we sit there with... Three different screens, all the yeah, all the mats. I we watch on laptop, that. telephone. We are watching all the wrestling matches. We love them. We mm -hmm. love them. Mm -hmm. That's amazing because sometimes you really have to separate from fighting, and you know, because look, it's nice to do it. You know, you're doing it because the job, but sometimes you have to escape. You have to shut down. Like I love doing what I do with my podcast, but sometimes you know, after that, I, I you just gotta you got to piece off and you want to yeah, do some do other stuff. Yeah. But, yeah, but I already do so many different things. And then when I do these different things, I just all I can think about is get back in the gym and train. <laughs> yeah. You know, I I, yeah, I love firefighting, but I'd rather have, uh, I'm, I'm actually setting that up in the, in the, uh, in the fire department. I'm mm -hmm. setting a whole mat up and, and, uh, and, 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 and walls and, and, and um, punching bags and everything. So I can, really I can train even more there. You're really addicted to fire. Yeah. And everything. Mm -hmm. That's that's amazing. That's our I want to, life. That's our life. It, it's it, you once it becomes part of you, it never leaves. It's like uh, like when I bought like when I got into MMA, the first thing I did was because because uh, I got into in 2015. Okay, so what I did was I used my history degree. So I'm not I should have been a history teacher, but you know life has other plans. And I bought the UFC visual history book um, okay. from Eyewitness, and that's when like I started reading all the history and finding out about it and. And that's wow. when I realized, like, okay, I'm a fan of this sport. And then I did, I bought Fight Pass and caught up on all the fights from before. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Tough. And it was, that's how I got into it. And now it's like, yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fight savant. I'm like you guys. I, I, it's part of my life. Yeah. Every Sunday morning after UFC, Bert uh, posts all the, all the fights on his, um, Facebook on, on his Facebook and uh, his uh, website from the gym. Oh, all Netherlands. All, yeah, all, all home. waiting for me yeah. on Sunday morning. Sunday morning. All Netherlands. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to keep an eye on it. I'm going to make sure to watch it because now, like, you know, I guess we're all friends now. So uh, I'm going to make, yeah, I got to sure support and I could share it too. I mean, you know, I guess we could say the Drew Spearience is now officially supporting Cops Gym. I mean, I got a lot of supporters, but you, but I'll make sure to start mentioning you guys in, uh, and my uh, support and like, cause I always, what I do, if you, if you've seen my other shows um, now I mentioned the supporters of the show. So I got to I'm gonna have to make a new edit and be like, yeah, hey, I got to add cops gym in there for what they, sure. what they helped with the show. Sure. Like, Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Cops gym, Amsterdam. Amsterdam cops in Amsterdam. Perfect. I'll say if you're in Amsterdam and you want to take up martial arts, make sure to check out cops gym, the leading you, MMA yes. gym <laughs> in Holland. Best MMA gym in Holland. Best sure. MMA gym, as you say. Yeah. So, um, and the other, so with the, with the, with what we speak about, let me ask you this now, as I said, I want to get off topic from fighting here. So I like to ask my guests this now. Okay. So this is a, this is like, um, a, a, what's the word? A flash question. Okay. Star Wars or James Bond, which film franchise for you? For guys? me, for me, mm -hmm. if I have to choose James Bond, I yeah. don't like uh, science too. fiction. I don't like too much science fiction. No. It has to be uh, a little reality. Stewart. Okay. I don't know. Well, let I me take it. I cannot follow it. Let yeah. me take it in this direction. Which Bond for you guys is the best? Sean Connery, George Lazenby, Roger Moore, 
Tim Dalton, Pierce Brosnan, or Daniel Craig? It's a difficult one because yeah. I did not see all the James <laughs> Bond movies. Roger you are not. Roger Moore. I yeah. think Roger Moore. Yeah. Roger Moore. <laughs> okay, fair. John says Roger Moore. John says Roger Moore. Hey, John. Yeah. Roger Moore. Okay, perfect. Roger Moore is a good choice. Roger Moore is a great choice for me. It's a, it's a bit choice. It's between Timothy Dalton, then yeah, yeah. Roger Moore because Timothy Dalton was basically yeah. Daniel Dalton. Craig. But that's 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 a good choice. Roger Moore, like <laughs> that, that guy, was a playboy man. He lived his life. Yeah, like we do. Yeah, exactly. That's the life of a fighter. You got to live it. You got to live in and enjoy it. So the guy next to, to Joey, not Bert, on uh, the guy, uh, John. Yeah. Hey, John, what's uh, what's your role with cops with the uh, cops uh, MMA? Absolutely. What's, what's your role? In, in, what's your role? What do you? I'm a wrestler. A wrestler. I started with uh, wrestling. I was seven years old. I'm born in Wellington, in New Zealand. Oh wow! So we have rugby and wrestling, and now kickboxing. And a big fan of Cop Senior. And, yes. and I'm a big fan of the old Bad Cop Senior. <laughs> he was the best wrestler we all have in the Netherlands. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. I, I don't know if you know this, but um, Bert's father, Bert Senior, mm -hmm. he was um, before uh, Jessica Blaska went to the Olympics in mm -hmm. um, '72 in Munich. In 2016, he was the last to go in uh, to go to the Olympics in in '72 for the Holland. Wow! And, he was the Munich, and when yeah. they shot the Israeli people, you know mm -hmm. the Palestinian, yeah, the Black September. Mm -hmm. And my father was training with two of the guys that got shot. Wow! Yeah. And on the day, yeah. on the there were friends of yeah. my father. He trained with them because he was uh, he didn't have a team. He was just by himself. Mm -hmm. he so he trained with the Israeli team. And then uh, on the day my father had to wrestle, in the morning they shot two of his friends, and then he go home. He was he didn't wrestle. He didn't. He wrestle. ended up didn't fighting. Uh, training for four years, didn't didn't wrestle. Oh didn't compete. God, that's nuts. That's a that's a crazy history, man. That's that's crazy. Yeah. And Israel is a known as a wrestling uh, hotbed because a lot of uh, Russian Jews that immigrate from Russia go to Israel and they have Greco wrestling or freestyle. So. That's yeah. nuts. That's crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. What has um and you know then there's also another famous uh, martial artist in Dutch martial arts, Jan Blumming. What is, how has his impact been for Dutch martial arts in the? Yeah. he was he was very famous karate guy and mm -hmm. judo, and he was very strong man, and he was back in the days he was a legend in the mm -hmm. yeah also in the criminal world everything. Mm -hmm. He was a big man, but. Yeah, he was uh, it's too long ago because uh, there was no, yeah. not MMA or something. The new generation, it's only wrestling, boxing, yeah. and karate. And uh, but nowadays, the people, if you if you say, do you know John Blooming? Nobody know who he is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no. mm -hmm. It's like I only follow. those. It's only like the the really old school maybe that know who he is. Like you really have to look in the history. Very old yeah. school. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I want to ask you guys um, now 2022 has been a great start, you know, Gegard defending his belt, uh, Gokan is, defend, is in the top 10, Costello's coming back, Gino's coming up. What do you hope is uh, the goal for 2022 and beyond for Cops MMA if the streak continues? Yeah, to keep the belts for Gegard. Yeah, two more fights this year, two more mm -hmm. fights this year, and next year, a few fights. And, and then, for us, we have uh, two more amazing fight weeks. <laughs> sure. The five weeks are awesome. Yeah. It's a really good time. And uh, yeah. But the whole team Musashi is one team of big friends. It's really yeah. friends and mm -hmm. family. Yeah. We have already, we all have a task and uh, everything is perfect together, really. Amazing. You love each other. Yeah. yeah. I love you guys too. I mean, like, it's, uh, it's like, I love the chemistry we have and, uh, I know, um, hopefully you guys saw my first conversation with Nima. That's when I was getting, coming up in the game of podcasting. Now it's more refined. It's like a martial art. It's like a martial art. You, you come in with no skill, but then you refine it. So that's what, uh, what I love about doing this. And it's, you know, you become friends with half the people you meet. Yeah. yeah. Well, good, man. We wish you all the luck in the world. And, uh, we hope you, we, uh, become a Joe Rogan, uh, in the podcasting world. Yeah. You guys better get on Rogan. Like I've been telling Nima, I said, Hey, 
when is Gegard coming on Rogan? And then Nima's like, uh, is they, he didn't want to answer it because, you know, he can't answer that. It's okay. I understand. Yeah. But uh, no, like, as I said, I'm going to be what, uh, one day when I get bigger, don't yeah. worry. In my own way, I'm not saying I'm the next Joe Rogan because Joe Rogan's Joe Rogan. But Dream big, brother. Dream big. Dream big. Then yeah. things will happen for sure. True, true. But uh, yeah, and that's amazing. Um, and the last question I have is for you guys, because, you know, like, because like I because like, you know, wanted to keep because I know you guys are super busy. My last question is when it comes to tr when it comes to um, traveling, which country has the best food? Hmm. Ooh. Well, we liked it when, when we went to the States. Yeah, yeah. I love it in the States. Yeah. So Canada is also great. I was one time I was in Vancouver mm -hmm. in 1983, mm -hmm. the World Championships wrestling and uh had a great time there also the same food as in the united states uh, big steaks we love that <laughs> i love it too <laughs> and the brazilian brazilian barbecue mm. oh we love that my wife is from suriname so i really have to say suriname food okay oh, i gotta try that suriname is where exactly it's in south america right yeah it's in the yeah. northern it's part exactly. it's it's, oh, it's yeah. right above uh, brazil awesome Awesome. Well, guys, I really want to thank you guys for coming on the Drew Experience. It's such an honor and uh, for Bert to take time out of your day and Joey for willing to say yes. And also thanks to Nima for really saying, yeah, it's, it's worth it to come on. Um, where can people connect with you guys and platforms? And then we'll make sure to, I'll make sure to like post it constantly in my stories until people say, Hey, we got the point. And I'm going to say, guess what? I don't care. Now, first of all, thanks for having us, uh, Drew. It was a, uh... Really, it was a pleasure, pleasure to do us. it. Yes, sure. and uh, you can follow me on Bird Cups on Facebook. Bird Cups, the one and only <laughs> Joey Bergenbos. Oh, yeah. It's not hard. Joey Berg MMA in Insta and Joey Bergenbos in um, in Facebook. Awesome. Awesome, guys. And make sure for everyone that likes this conversation to like, share, subscribe, comment to the Drew Experience. It's on YouTube. It's going to be on audio as well soon, both. But guys, as I said, if you really love Dutch MMA or just martial arts in general, make sure to give these guys the support. And if you're an up-and-coming Kyokushin fighter that wants to go pro and you're looking for a good manager, uh, always go to Moments Management. Nima and his team will take care of you. So that's what I, yeah. I like to say. And remember, wrestling makes MMA. That's true. Wrestling makes MMA. So everybody that needs to uh, wants to do MMA, come see us at the gym. Perfect. All right. Thanks for coming on, guys. Okay, Drew. Okay,